What's the most inaccurate thing your child has ever been taught in school? My 11-year-old daughter came home looking really confused because her science teacher told the class that humans only use 10% of their brains. My daughter, Emma, has wanted to be a doctor since she was seven. While other kids played pretend with tea sets, Emma was stitching together patients made of stuffed animals and cotton balls. Our bookshelf is crammed with anatomy guides and medical encyclopedias. She watches surgical videos like other kids watch cartoons. Last summer, I took her to a neuroscience exhibit at a science museum where she got to wear an EEG cap and see how her brain brain lit up in real time. She still talks about that day like it was Christmas. But everything shifted when Mr. Lewis started teaching science. During a unit on the human brain, he told the class, you know, we only use 10% of our brains. Imagine what we could do if we use the rest. Emma raised her hand. That's a myth, she said. Modern neuroscience shows we use nearly every part of our brain, even when we're resting. I read about it in Dr. Medina's brain rules. Mr. Lewis gave her a tight smile. You can believe your little books if you want, he said. But this is a well-known fact, and it's in our textbook. I've been teaching it for years. The the next day, Emma brought in her copy of Brain Rules, a gift from her uncle who's a neurologist. She even bookmarked the page debunking the 10% myth. But instead of reading it, Mr. Lewis took the book away and told her to stop challenging authority in front of the class. He made her write, humans only use 10% of their brain, 10 times on the board before recess. Emma came home in tears. Her prized book was gone, and she felt like she was being punished for knowing too much. To top it off, she'd been assigned a three-page essay titled, The Value of Trusting Educators. I was furious. I went to see Mr. Lewis and told him straight up, this is a myth. But before I could say more, he interrupted me saying, these days everyone thinks they're a teacher just because they can Google. I'm just following the textbook. The principal was polite but hesitant, calling it a harmless simplification. That's when I decided enough was enough. A close friend of mine from college is now a researcher in cognitive neuroscience at Johns Hopkins. When I told her what happened, she said, send me the school's address. Three days later, I walked into Emma's classroom during science period. Mr. Lewis looked mildly irritated until I introduced my guest, Dr. Anita Feldman, PhD in brain and cognitive sciences. Dr. Feldman asked if she could talk to the class for a few minutes. Mr. Lewis couldn't exactly say no. His face tightened a bit when she started explaining how the brain actually works. She kept it simple, saying things like, your brain is active all the time. Then she held up a colorful brain diagram and explained how modern scans show we actually use almost every part of our brain, even when we're resting or just doing simple things. She said, despite what you might have heard, the idea that we only use 10% of our brain is just a myth. We use all of it, just not all at once. One student raised their hand, but Mr. Lewis said it's in the textbook. Dr. Feldman gave a small nod and held it up. People believed that for a long time, even some scientists, but science keeps moving. And when we learn better, we have to teach better too. A few days later, the school sent out a letter to all the parents, admitting they'd been teaching outdated science and promising to update the syllabus. The irony? They asked Mr. Lewis to help suggest the changes. Emma's class even got invited to a seminar during Brain Awareness Week. And that signed book? It's now in a glass case in the school library, right next to a little note that says, learning never stops, even for teachers. 